Hello, and welcome to the next in our series of Why Me videos. So these are videos we've prepared to showcase the amazing careers in the manufacturing and engineering industries. Um, so I'm really pleased today that the team from Luxonara are here and you've just seen um, a demonstration of one of their lasers. And what we're now gonna do is allow them to show you a tour of their lab facilities or some of them at least, um, and tell you a little bit more about what their products do. I'm Louise and I work as an applications engineer at Luxonara. My role here is to investigate and test applications for the lasers that we manufacture and to demonstrate to our customers and potential new customers how a laser could help them in their manufacturing process. Uh, maybe to speed up the process, to improve the quality, maybe to replace a more conventional method of, of cutting or marking or welding a product. Um, so it's, it's a really interesting role. As a company, we supply lasers to a, a wide range of different industries. Um, so we, we sell lasers to the food and beverage industry, the automotive industry, medical and pharmaceutical, um, packaging, clothing and textiles. Um, there's a really long list. So it means in the lab here, we see lots of different materials, lots of different products. And we, we study the way the laser interacts with the material in each case. Um, and we, we work to find the best way of, of carrying out that process with that material. Um, it could be cutting something, it could be marking, welding, drilling holes, engraving, uh, lots of different processes, lots of different parameters to work with. So even though it is, it's essentially a sales role, I work for the sales department and the idea is to, to demonstrate our capabilities and to sell lasers. But it's still a role where I get to use a lot of science to do a lot of experimentation. Um, and it's, it's actually really fun. It's, it's really interesting. We get different, different things in every day. So you never quite know from one day to the next what you're going to be working on. Um, so it's constantly sort of stimulating in that way. Um, I work in one of our two applications labs. That's where I spend the majority of my time. Obviously there are other aspects such as writing reports and admin and that kind of thing, but most of my time is it's very hands-on role. As I say, lots of experimentation, lots of lab work. So I think I'll, what I'll do is I'll take you for a little tour around our labs, show you some of the equipment, some of the things we do, and um, maybe give you a little demonstration of what the lasers can do. This is one of the labs where I work, and in this lab we mainly deal with laser marking applications. Um, we get samples from all sorts of different industries, so we see stuff from the automotive industry, food and beverage industry, um, packaging, pharmaceuticals and cosmetics, um, glass, lots of different materials and different products. So we, we do quite a wide range of testing in here with the equipment that you can see. So I'll take you for a little walk around and just show you what we do in here, a bit of what we've got. Um, the first system here, this is a, a laser that we manufacture. Um, this is aimed at the brewery industry. So the main requirement here is for very fast marking. Um, bottles would be on a, a moving carousel uh, going past the laser at very high speeds. And we need to mark information on each bottle as it passes. So I've got an example here, if I can pick it up on the camera. You can see on the, on the neck of the bottle here, there's a date and batch code, which has been marked with one of our lasers. Um, similar thing on this bottle, on the white panel there, you can see similar information, which has been marked with, with a system like this one. So when customers send samples to us, we need to, to test it by replicating their process as closely as we can. So we need to test the process at at that speed. Uh, so if I take you around here, you can see the lasers in the cabinet there. We have a, a beam delivery system to get the beam over here. And inside this enclosure, there is a, a carousel. If I can get it on the camera, that's better. Um, this carousel rotates at very high speed. And on each of these carriers here, we can place a, a label similar to the one on the beer bottle and we can mark the, the customer's code at the speed that the customer would be, be working at to, to demonstrate the process. Um, 
over here we've got another system which is basically the same laser but this one's set up without the carousel and we use this one just for marking things that are static, that aren't moving. Um, a few more examples of the kind of samples that we've seen in the lab are, are on here. So we've got a, um, a shampoo bottle. This is a plastic, obviously. I guess you're all familiar with that, with a, a date code marks on it. Um, cereal boxes. These are obviously cardboard, so we have, a, again, a date code mark there. And this is, this is similar. Um, this is packaging for probably a pharmaceutical product, some kind of medication. Um, we can mark on wood and cork, so there's a wine cork and you're probably familiar with these ice cream sticks. So the, the information, the logos on those could be laser marks. Um, sometimes we get more unusual materials and unusual samples, so we've got an, an egg here. The, the pattern that you see on there has been marked with a laser. Um, we have been asked to mark on bread rolls, on olives, on all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Uh, so moving around a little bit, we've got another laser system here. This again, it, it does the same job. This can mark on products either static or moving past on the, the rail that you can see at the back of the picture there. Um, so this system, this is a floor standing version, but it, it does essentially the same job. Uh, so again, we use this to test all kinds of samples. Um, over here we have our robot system, which is something a little bit different. This is actually used for cutting as well as marking and scribing. Um, and this is really for products which are not flat, three-dimensional products, because the, the robot arm can move the, the laser's beam delivery to follow a contour of a, a three-dimensional product. Uh, so moving round, we've got the area here is sort of under construction. This is a new system which is not quite ready for use yet. That needs some more components adding. Um, and then finally over here, this is our large area scanner. So it, it kind of does the same job as the systems you've just seen, but it has a, a bigger, more powerful laser, which is hidden behind the, the big grey panel at the bottom. And then the, the working area is a lot larger. So the material that you're marking would be on the table there. And we can mark larger, still flat objects, but larger objects over a, a bigger area. Um, so that is the laser marking lab. Luxanar develops laser technology to enhance the world. Focused. We are well prepared to adapt and move quickly to meet our customer needs. Farsighted. We can't predict the future, but when tomorrow's challenges arise, we'll be ahead of the curve. Global. We are a UK business on a global stage. Adventurous. We are pioneers. Human. Never forget that technology is created by people. Assured. We can provide a reassuring, responsive and confident voice to our customers. We are Luxinar. Ingenuity Amplified. So, they were brilliant videos. Thank you very much for doing those, Louise. Um, so what I was going to do now is ask you a bit more about your job at Luxonar and how you got it. So could you tell us a bit more about you and what your qualifications and stuff are, please? Um, yeah, um, I came into it through quite an academic route. Um, I, I always quite enjoyed the sciences at school. I enjoyed a lot of subjects at school, but I studied physics to A level and then decided I wanted to go on and do physics at university. So. I, I'm from Sheffield originally, but that's when I moved to Hull to come to university. So I did a physics degree for three years, uh, which I really enjoyed. And then I stayed on at Hull University and continued to do a PhD for another probably four years. And then I, I worked in postdoctoral research for a few more years after that. So I, I spent quite a long time at university um, and then eventually made the move into the, the laser industry. Um, we were struggling with funding at university in the position I was in. It was a short term, a fixed term contract. 
and that came to an end and it was um, basically through somebody that the professor who I was working for at the time knew. I moved into the laser industry with a different company. Um, I spent about four years, five years there. And then when I, I was made redundant from that position and that company no longer exists, but that's when I made the move to Luxinar um, and got into laser applications. Whereas prior to that, I was more in R&D and um, designing the lasers and, and sort of working on the, the product development side. So coming to Luxinar was a little bit of a change still the same industry but more in the the application testing side okay no that's that sounds <laughs> that sounds like an interesting a very career so you did your degree wasn't in laser though was it it was more general than that no my, my first degree was uh, applied physics so it was quite right. general we did electronics we did basic you know physics fundamental physics mechanics so quite a good general overview um, and then my phd wasn't in co2 lasers either that was more semiconductor physics, which was quite an active area of research for Hull University at that time. Um, and then the, the work I did at the uni after that was all sort of around the semiconductor physics, optical properties of semiconductors. So the move into CO2 lasers was a bit of a, a jump in, in subject matter, I suppose. Um, but it's uh, I kind of got here by accident. It was basically, as I said, through somebody knowing somebody. Um, so, so yeah, that was the, the the big jump, but still the, the physics background still kind of stands you in good yeah. stead for this kind of thing. There's a lot of skills, generic kind of skills that apply across the board. So it was a bit of a learning curve at first, but but yeah, you get there. It's it's interesting to make the move into something different, to be honest. It does, and it's it I think it's quite interesting. Some people think that careers are quite linear, you know, that you go mm. off and do a particular subject mm. and you get into it. And actually what yeah. we're finding is they're not linear yeah. at all. No, it doesn't have to be. I mean, mine, I, I knew I wanted to do something in the sciences. I was, as I said, I enjoyed physics particularly and um, still enjoyed the other sciences, but I decided not to pursue those. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have to be linear. My career has really been dictated by the opportunities that were sort of presented to me at the time. A lot of it has been you know there's a, an opportunity going there that seems interesting so I've, I've gone for it and a lot of it is just through people you come across people you know throughout your career and you discover new things and sort of head off in a slightly different direction but, excellent okay and and at school was there anything that particularly sort of helped you decide what you'd go and what whether you'd do an apprenticeship route a degree route what subject you'd choose was there a teacher and, that helped you on what yeah, I mean, there were a few things really. I was always sort of an academic type. I liked reading and studying. I was never sort of put off by that aspect of the work where some kids don't like that. They just want to get stuck in and do something. Um, and I, I enjoyed quite a few different subjects at school. I did enjoy the sciences, but I also enjoyed languages a lot. Um, and I enjoyed the sort of arts subjects, particularly music. So I was always in this, when it came to choosing options, it was a bit of a dilemma, what do I do? Um, at GCSE level, you get to do a broad range. The school encourages to do a science, a language, a humanity, and an art. So that wasn't so much of a problem. Um, and then A levels, again, I, I was a bit torn. So I actually did French, German, and physics. So I got a bit of both. Um, and then I, I, we had particular teachers that were, were particularly good. So that really does help to have a teacher who's inspiring and engaging and um, in a in a way it sort of worked the opposite way for me because I had a teacher in, in one of the languages who wasn't particularly engaging and we just didn't click and I sort of lost interest a little bit in the language side um, I think the thing that really swung it was a, the school did a sort of taster day to help us to choose options for university and for later on and they organized an event where you could go and sort of sample a subject just for a day or half a day or something and I went to the physics one and it was really, really good. They'd got some practical experiments going on. Um, I remember it was sort of a bridge building competition where they gave us some random materials, bits of paper and card and drinking straws and all sorts of things. And we had to build a bridge to span a gap between two desks, make it as strong as possible. So you were using engineering principles to design Obviously, a piece of paper isn't going to do much, but if you fold that paper, stick it together in certain structures, you could build quite a strong bridge. 
and then there was a bit of a competitive element because they put some weights on them at the end of the day and you know to see whose was the strongest and the practical side of it was really fun you know just learning through doing things and I think that was one of the things that sort of swung it and I thought yeah I want to do this is what I want to do excellent um, that no that's helpful because it, it does help students to think about what what would they like to experience to help them decide because mm. you always get that you know should I do yeah. this should I do that yeah, so that, yeah. that's helpful perfect yeah um, and I was really torn but seeing things in action like that and then and following that I went to some university open days and visited physics departments and engineering departments so you get to see you know real teaching labs real university research labs and you get to talk to the students there and that sort of confirmed it I thought yeah this is this is what I'm going to be doing so that sort of goes to my other question then is what advice would you give your younger self it sounds like it's you've got to go and try to look at yeah, the options I think, yeah yeah look at all your options um I would say go with what you enjoy obviously and don't do things because people say that maybe you should be doing that because because I was quite good at the languages as well as at the sciences I had teachers in the language department who were trying to sort of push me in that direction quite a lot because all the teachers want you to do their subject and and I'm not saying don't take advice from people because obviously you should you know talk to as many people as you can and get advice but at the end of the day you've got to enjoy what you do so if you feel that you know you're drawn to something and that's what you want to do then go for it um, and don't be afraid to change direction if you sort of because I was sort of heading more down the languages path for quite a long time and the physics was something I enjoyed but it was a bit of a, a subject to make up the numbers for me at one point so a toss up between physics and music and I went for physics but I was I was headed down the path of doing languages and I said it was this physics taste today thing that kind of swung it and it was at quite a late stage that I thought actually I want to switch from languages to science and, and then people through sort of various obstacles I got told you can't go to university because you've done languages they won't let you in to do physics because you're not doing maths they won't you know you can't do physics if you're not doing maths but, and then I had a, a couple of teachers at school who were really supportive and helped me contacted universities on my behalf and helped me to find out what was possible um, and yeah a lot of places were accommodating and they offered you know extra help if you if you need extra help with the math side some places turned me down they said no you know you can only come if you've done all three sciences and you've got A's in everything and all the rest of it but all the university were really really supportive um, and a couple of particular teachers at school were really helpful and yeah, I sort of did a bit of a U-turn, but it's it's been good. And Excellent. I've back really, so yeah, don't be afraid to change direction if you feel that you're heading in sort of the wrong way. It can be done. And okay. Now that's great advice because you know life is not one straight road, is it? So absolutely. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, what I was going to do now is um, ask Joe to tell us a bit more, because we've heard about your career at, at Luxonard, but I'm guessing there are a few other roles in Luxonard because you're in um, applications and sales and things. But Joe yes. um, is going to show us, I thought, or tell us a little bit more um, about other roles, please. Yeah, yeah so um, I've got a, an image that I can share. OK. OK, if I try that now. So here we're looking at all the different departments that we have in Luxonar. Um, so just so that you know, we manufacture industrial lasers. So that means that our lasers are sold to industries such as um, the car industry, packaging, um, electronics, textiles, and they're used for cutting, drilling, welding, marking, lots of different materials. And what we do at our site in Hesel is we do everything. So right from here, research and development, right the way through production, and then round here to sales, and then after sales as well. So it's going right from what we're calling concept to customer. Um, so we have um, people, our colleagues in research and development, who quite often have a background in physics, which could be GCSE level right the way up to a, a PhD. And they're looking at, at the, the concepts, the, you know, researching what, what we need to, to improve upon, what we need to develop from scratch, and then they'll build the prototypes. 
that goes through to engineering where we have people who um, particularly uh, in, in our drawing office they they can do mechanical engineering jobs they can develop 3d CAD drawings that kind of thing um, and then and they're working closely with other parts of the business so they could be working with somebody in sales who's speaking to the customer and saying this is what we need to develop and then that will go to the research and development and the engineering um, colleagues to work on um, other parts of, of the business we have obviously are purchasing so um, but our colleagues in the, this department will be going out and finding suppliers who can who can supply us with the parts that we need in order to build the lasers and um, people working in that um, area they, they are quite often technically competent so you know they, they need to understand a little bit about the lasers in order to do their job um, then we go through to the production area where clearly we're, we're building the lasers um, and that's quite um, a complex process involves different stages including a very important one which is to test the lasers before they're they're actually shipped to our to our customers um, of course as well we need to check on the quality so um, this we have various quality standards that are not just from within the company but from outside organizations that state that the the lasers have to meet a certain standard so the people in in that area as well they are technically competent uh, in order to understand you know what, what our lasers have to do um, and bear in mind our lasers are sold throughout the world uh, in fact i think it's over 95 percent of them go are exported so we're not just talking about the uk here so we've got different standards for, from uh, different uh, countries around the world uh, we've also got a department that deals with document control and it so the people working there obviously have to be good with computers they have to um, be be well organized um, have good attention to detail and these are skills that are, are useful in all different departments you know from from production quality uh, etc as well then clearly we've got to sell the, the lasers. I, I personally work in, in marketing, which is part of the, the sales um, team. So obviously we're, we're doing the things like the website and uh, brochures and events and so on. Um, again, the people working in sales have quite a technical background because the product that they're selling is quite technically complex. Um, so, so that's uh, that, that stage. Um, also, we have a finance department. So clearly, once we've sold uh, a laser, we need to get the money to pay for, for those from our customers. Um, so again, if you're working in finance, you're, that must involve, uh, a, from an accounting point of view, an ability with, with maths. Uh, and then after we've sold the products, the lasers, we have an after sales department. So they are providing um, technical support to our customers who are located throughout the world. Um, they do maintenance service if it's needed and any repairs. So in a nutshell, we have just about every single type of job you could imagine really, because we're doing everything all under the one roof, for our, um, our site in Heslon near, near the Humber Bridge. That's perfect. Thank you, Joe. That's uh, very comprehensive. And if people want to know um, more about the job vacancies, they, you've got your website up there, the luxonar.com. Is that yes. the best place for them to go? It I guess is. Yeah, we, we, we've got a, a careers page on there. I mean, you can, you can look on there and find out about our products and, and the markets that we sell into as, as well. Um, but yeah, we've got a careers page on there and we are currently recruiting actually. So uh, within the production department. So yeah, it's, it's useful to, to look on there and, and learn more. Perfect. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you very much to Louise and Joe for um, coming on and and. Say, saying what more well what looks and i do i was fascinated watching the marking and the cutting demos so we haven't had a chance to have played all the videos that they they've prepared for us now so what we're going to do is is finish here and but now we're going to play some more videos that show more about the marking and the cutting demos that louise has pulled together so thanks very much Okay, I'm in a different part of the factory now, and in this lab we deal mainly with laser cutting applications. We do see other processes in here, such as drilling holes in things, and scribing, even welding, but most of the applications we test in here will involve cutting something. Um, this is the machine we use, and you can see it looks very different from the laser marking systems in the other lab. 
Uh, it's a lot bigger, uh, it handles large sheets of material, uh, quite large samples and quite thick samples. And the main difference is the way the laser beam is delivered to the workpiece. Um, rather than the small high speed scan head on the marking system, in this case we, the laser beam comes up through the beam delivery and it comes to the workpiece via this cutting head and nozzle, which you can see there. Um, there's a focusing lens inside here and the, the hose here and the nozzle. Through this we can deliver compressed air to the workpiece. And what that does is it blows away all the fumes and molten material from the cup, keeping the cup nice and clean. And that's really important for the cup quality to produce good results. Um, this head moves around the table. It's all controlled by a computer which is on the table behind me. Um, and we have software there so we can, as before, we can cut different shapes, lines, graphics, um, whatever we want really. So if I take you for a walk down here, down to the back of the machine, um, this is where the lasers are mounted. Um, we actually have three different lasers mounted on here. I think you can just about see them all in the picture there. Um, this is so, we don't use them all at once obviously, but this is so we can chop and change and we can test different applications with different lasers relatively easily, just by moving a few mirrors around. Um, as you might expect, the, the largest laser over here is the one with the highest power. This is a 650 watt laser. And the other two are some of our smaller models, um, but those are uh, the lower power but different wavelengths, so those are more targeted at certain specific applications. Um, uh, so that's pretty much it in this lab. The other thing we have in here is our microscope. and We use this in conjunction both with the cutting system and with the marking system to basically examine the samples that we produce to characterise the results um, and just to get some feedback on whether we're doing things properly, whether the results are good. Um, so you can just see a few examples on here. We've got, uh, this is the edge of a laser cut piece of plastic, um, some ceramic scribing up there and this is a scribing the surface of some plastic with a coating. Um, so this helps us a lot in our experiments.